Hello everyone, Christina here. Welcome to day four of the holiday card series for 2020. Welcome back after the weekend. Today's card is all about the watercoloring with a really beefed up layered die cut greeting over top. Hope you guys enjoy. Let's get into it. The stamp set I'm using today is from Memory Box. This is a big wreath stamp. It's very similar to a stamp I used last year, but this one is the Berry Wreath Stamp Set, and it looks a little bit different than the one I did last year. I'm going to be doing some watercoloring today. I'm using Arches Cold Press Watercolor Paper, and I'm going to cut this down to six by six and then do a little bit of stamping. Now, this huge wreath stamp, I stamped it once, and the center area caught the ink, and it didn't stamp as well. So I'm doing some stamp surgery and cutting out the center area of the stamp is just going to prevent any air pockets uh, forming underneath the stamp and then it causes a bubble. And then when you go to stamp it, you know, it makes a mess of things. So this is just make it a little bit easier. Now, last year when I used a similar image from Memory Box, I had the wreath uh, kind of coming off the bottom of the card so the bottom was cut off and I liked that I did where it didn't show the entire wreath so this year I thought with this different image of a wreath I I thought I would have the two wreaths coming in from the sides and meeting in the middle so I'm first stamping the right side and I'm using my memory misty which is the large 12 by 12 misty because like I said before this paper is 6 by 6 and then I have this big stamp hanging off the end as well so I needed to have a larger area to be able to stamp I used acorn ink from versifying Claire and I stamped each of these a couple of times so I got a really solid image that ink is waterproof, which is perfect for watercoloring. And I've taped this piece to a hardboard to hold it down while I do all my painting. I'm using one of my favorite budget-friendly watercolor palettes today. This is the American Crafts and Paper Fashion watercolor set. I know this set really, really well after I spent an entire month using only this set during my capsule paper crafting challenge back in February. So I know these colors really well. I'm going to be mixing up two different colors of green. I have the green that's straight from the palette, and then I'm also mixing it with the dark blue. It's going to give me more of a dark green, tealish shade. And I'm first going to start with the light green and just drop in a little bit of color on all the leaves. Very, very simple, not getting complicated with this. I'm just putting color down. And after I've painted, all of the leaves, I'm going to go in with that darker green shade and start dropping it in, trying to concentrate that color at the bottom of each leaf where it meets the stem. This is going to give me just a little bit of variation in color. After I paint each leaf or add that dark green, I come in with a clean brush and just spread that color out a little bit so that it's not such a harsh line. And this is going to give a gradation to all these leaves. Um, if you want to keep it as a little bit of a harsher line, I think it looks really cool. It's definitely a watercolor look. And you know, don't hesitate if it leaves lines like that, just go ahead and leave them in. So after I painted all my leaves, I'm going to come in with my heat tool to just speed along the drying process. You definitely could just let this air dry. Um, I mentioned that in the past. You could also use a hair dryer. So, you know, just whatever you need to do uh, to get it completely dry. I'm now mixing up a blue shade. I'm using the blue straight from the palette and I'm going to be adding quite a bit of water to it, trying to water it down. My original thought was to have a very pale blue background behind the wreaths. And I even considered having the berries on the wreath be white. I think that looks really, really pretty. Um, I also think it'd be really nice to have a pale gray as a background and keep the berries white as well. But after I put that initial layer of the pale blue down, I decided I wanted it to be more intense. So I used a more concentrated color, um, that same blue shade from the palette, and then I decided to bring in the dark navy shade. 
I'm watering this down a little bit and I'm applying water to the surface of the background first and then dropping in that color. And that's going to help me get just a little bit better dispersion of color and have it really bloom out from that main area. I'm being very messy with this layer because I do want some areas of that lighter uh, blue shade to come through. I don't want this to be completely just a flat navy blue color. I want there to be some variation in shade and color and um, I'm, I'm trying to concentrate most of the darkest colors right up underneath the wreaths as well. So I turned my board around so that I have a little bit of an easier angle for my hand and then just continued painting. So I think this would be a really fun opportunity if you wanted to change up the colors that are used on the background as well. I think you could have a gradation of colors. Maybe it's a lighter blue on one end and a darker blue on the other end. There's a lot of different ways to personalize and customize uh, this particular card idea. I'm adding in more of that blue shade on the interior of the wreaths. One of the reasons why I wanted to I use a darker background on this is because I plan to use a white die cut greeting and I wanted to make sure that that die cut greeting had a substantial dark background to sit on because it is going to be white. I didn't want it to have too much of a tone on tone and possibly get lost with this sort of busy background with all the berries and leaves. So that's one of the reasons why I continue to bring in more and more color. I'm using the red from the palette, just the straight red color. This is one of the reasons why I love this palette because the colors just seem to be the colors I need to use. I don't have to mix them too much or get crazy with all of the different variations in color. Dropping in color on each of these berries, preserving kind of that top right area on each berry to be a kind of a, a shine spot or a glare, um, the highlight on each berry. So after I had all of my painting pretty much complete, um, I decided I wanted to bring in a little bit of a darker red shade. So I actually just mixed the green and red that's on my palette, palette currently to create a dark brown reddish shade. And I dried my berries before I added that additional color and then dropped in a dark red shade just on the uh, bottom left of each berry to give a little bit more dimension. I trimmed down my piece so that it is five by five inches and then I'm going to work on the greeting area. So there's my piece there. I'm going to be using the large script Merry Christmas die set from uh, Simon Says Stamp but I'm only using the Merry Christmas greeting. I'm not going to be using that shadow outline. I cut it out of white cardstock. This is Nina Classic Crest Solar White 80 pound cardstock. And I cut it out four times and I'm stacking these die cuts on top of uh, each other to create a substantial die cut. So it's gonna be really, really thick. And I like to use Gina K Connect glue for that. It gives me a little bit of time after they're adhered to wiggle it around. And before I adhere it to my watercolor piece, I kind of moved the greeting around and decided I'm going to add a second line of text. So I'm using some Hero Arts uh, pitch black cardstock, prepping it with an anti-static powder tool, and then I'm going to stamp a greeting from the Tiny Words Christmas stamp set from Simon Says Stamp. Uh, it just says, we wish you a Merry Christmas. I think that's what it says. It's so tiny on screen, I can't even see right now. But I'm stamping that greeting in Versamark ink. This is a very sticky ink. It's my most favorite ink uh, for use with embossing powder. So I'm very carefully stamping that down and then adhere, uh, sprinkling on some alabaster embossing powder from British Monroe. I hit that with my heat tool. And this greeting actually says, hope your Christmas is amazing. I was really wrong on this one, <laughs> but it goes well with that Merry Christmas. To trim it down, I'm using a T-square ruler and an X-Acto knife. This is a craft knife from Martha Stewart Crafts. Um, for little tiny greetings like this, I like to just use an X-Acto knife. It's a little bit easier than trying to eyeball it with a paper trimmer. Trimmed off that end and then added a very thin strip of foam adhesive. This is some foam adhesive from Darius. Use my tweezers just to uh, position this just right and place it down onto my card front. 
And once I have that little tiny greeting in place, then I can adhere the large Merry Christmas greeting. So using my tweezers, I'm holding that very thick greeting, applying the Gina K Designs Connect glue, and then placing that right down on top. Now, in order to really hold this in place while it dries, I'm going to grab a stack of acrylic blocks and it's going to have just enough weight in those blocks to hold down this die cut while it dries completely. So just place that over the top and then I can set this aside while I work on the actual base of the card. I've cut some cardstock to 10 inches tall by five and a half wide and then I scored that at five and a half to create a five and a half square card. Put foam adhesive on the back of my watercolor piece and then adhered it directly to that card front. And that finishes the card for today. This is a really fun card. I think I want to recreate this using different colors in the background and possibly using that idea of using the white berries instead of having them be that deep red shade. So truth be told, as I was working on that card, I was not convinced <laughs> that I would like it, um, but I'm glad I kept going because I do enjoy how it turned out. I like the, the kind of teal navy shades juxtaposed with that bright red and the grain of the leaves. I think it looks really, really nice. And I hope, um, you know, seeing the palette and how I was mixing colors helps you out a little bit as well. On screen, I've got three more videos for you to check out. These are all going to be day four of previous years of the holiday card series. So you've got 2019, 2018, and 2017. Thanks so much for watching. I will be back on Wednesday with day five of the holiday card series. See you then.